Rive is a tool to create animations. We'll cover how to create Flame Games that imports the Rive animations as position components. To focus on the Flame components of building your Flutter game, we're going to use pre-built community assets from the Rive community site. It's best if you create a free account on Rive so that you can follow along with a small portion of the, tu of the tutorial to get the name of the animation from these component. On the previous panel, there was open in Rive, which we're looking at right now, and download. After you download it, open the animation in Rive. In the lower left-hand side of the panel, there's the name of the animation, which is animation one. We're gonna need this in the future. I'm gonna create a brand new Flutter project. I'm just gonna specify my platform to Windows to reduce the size of my project. Uh, you could create it for a course for Android or iOS, depending on your system. And then it's the name of the project, which I'm calling Rive underscore tutorial. Then we're going to have to uh, add the Flutter pub add flame underscore Rive package. This will install both flame and Rive as well as flame underscore Rive. Once you create your project and you add it, the flame underscore Rive package, not just flame, uh, let's create a directory for assets. So we're going to store the Rive asset, this animation, into an assets folder similar to an image. Similar to using image or audio assets, you're going to need to specify the location of the assets in your pubspec.yaml file and then run flutter pub get. So first with the, the YAML syntax, it's the assets colon and then it's assets, this is where I have the animation, slash. I'm just gonna leave it at that. So it's gonna grab every asset within that subfolder. Now we have the main.dart file with the very nice, but uh, somewhat verbose example file uh, from the Flutter team, which is great, but let's get rid of it to focus on the small basic parts of the Flame game. So we're gonna have a new class that extends the Flame game. Flame is from the uh, Flame game is from the Flame package. So we're gonna to need to import that. So at the top, just import the package Flame slash game dot dart, and then we should have access to the Flame game, which is the the it's the base game for what we're gonna be building here. After we have the Flame game. Uh, there's a game widget, which is a special class from the flame system and that creates a that has a parameter game and we're going to pass it the instantiated value of my game. So it should be all blank when we run it here uh, just to check to make sure that we've installed flame par properly. Uh, I'd like to run it. Great. So the game is up. So I'd like to make sure that there's no syntax errors, mainly that we can import Flame itself and that it will run. So similar to loading an asset, whether it's an audio file or an image file, when you load the animations, we're gonna load it in the built-in method of the Flame game, which is on load, which is a future. So we're gonna have to do future, this angle bracket void on load, and it's async so the first thing is just the, the super on load, just to make sure that the base on load me method has run. And then there's this new thing from Rive, which is called artboard. So this is a new concept, this artboard, and it's from Rive. And there's a handful of these terms you'll have to get familiar with in order to use Rive within your Flame game. So there's the artboard, there's the controller for the animation, there's the animation file. Uh, there's several other concepts. These are all part of the Rive package or the Rive or the Flame underscore Rive package. Uh, this one is from Rive. But let's set it up so that we both have the Flame underscore Rive as well as the Rive, the Rive packages in our game, so that we can go forward with the rest of the tutorial. And also make sure that there's a lowercase b in artboard and uh, it's not camel case, it's always uh, lowercase. And in order to get the artboard into our flame game, we have this very nice method, 
load artboard, which is from flame underscore rive. And that will accept the rive file, which is from rive. And it's the name of the actual animation that's on our local storage. It's maybe useful to know with the packages from flame underscore rive or rive because you can refer to the rive documentation. Even though nothing shows up on the screen, I like to keep running this thing and checking it just to make sure that the asset, the animation asset is loading. But now we can get it to appear on the screen. So similar to an image, we're just gonna create a, a variable. Uh, we'll have it outside of the onload so we can access it later in the update method of Flame. And it's Rive component. And we'll call ours carrots component, although it's possibly the animation is a radish. I'm not really sure. And the rive component is the real secret as to how we get this thing into flame because that rive component extends a position component. We're calling ours carrot component, although you might want to call it radish component based on the description on the rive site, but I'm just going to go with carrot. Our carrot component is now a flame component, so we have to attach it to the Rive artboard, which is a Rive, it's from the Rive package. And then we can specify the size of the carrot component, similar to any position component within the flame system. So I'm using vector to all, which is a square of 300 pixels by 300 pixels. Now we have this new concept for a carrot controller. Rive has this concept of animation controllers, and this thing is documented in the Flutter Rive package or on the Rive site. So one-shot animation is a, it's a special keyword from the Rive package. You have to pass it the animation, which you can get from the Rive editor in the lower left-hand pane. The animation one is from that specific file. And just to get us started, I'm going to set the autoplay to true. So these are parameters from that Rive package for the animation controller. And you have quite a bit of control over the animation, uh, maybe too much control to get started with, so it could be confusing. So let's just have a very simple one where it autoplays. And then we'll add the carrot component, which is a position component, but is running the Rive animation. And boom, we have our carrot. And the more I do this tutorial, I'm starting to think that it is actually a radish that's orange in color, but I'm not gonna change my variable names at this point. So I'm using a color picker to get the background color of the radish for this quick demonstration. So all I need is this hex code for what the background color that the radish is on. And I'm gonna use that to set the background color of my flame game. So flame, Flame game has this uh, method for background color. So I'm gonna override it. Normally it's black in flame, but you can specify a color. Uh, that it's only used at, at the runtime, so you can't change it during the game. I have another video how to change the background during gameplay, even with tints, but for this example, this background color is perfect, right? Because we we're, we just want to have the same background color as the radish. So now when we run it, our radish kind of looks like it's floating in space on our flame game because the flame game background is the same color as the background of the radish. Uh, just to illustrate that it is a position component within the flame game system, I'm going to apply an update method to flame game. So you could have the update method either on the on the uh, carrot component or within the flame game system. For simplicity, we'll just run it within the flame game system. I'm gonna adjust the X coordinate of the carrot component by one to make it move across the screen. Fantastic, we now have a carrot, you know, the legs kind of make it looks like it's floating across space, maybe swimming a bit to get to the other side. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.